Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. I'm Nick DeSanctis. This week we'll head down to Crystal Arena for X's and O's, meet the only senior on the Army men's basketball team, and get an inside look at the second Army-Navy Cup. We'll start today with our cadet spotlight. The only senior on the Army men's basketball team hopes to branch armor and longs for a career in business one day. Josh Herbeck, this week's cadet spotlight. I mean, it's different. Um, it's different from any other team I've been on, uh, kind of being the oldest guy. But uh, it, it's not too difficult, you know, because we have a lot of guys who played a lot, uh, and a lot of experience, especially with their younger guys. So, um, you know, you might think that it'd be difficult having a lot of sophomores and freshmen. Um, but we have a lot of good support from the juniors, and uh, those guys have played a lot, so they have a lot of experience and are not really uh, that young of players. Uh, grade school, I'd always kind of shoot threes and then um, just started making them, so I just kind of stuck to that and did what I was good at. So, <laughs> Yeah, this year um, really focused on my defense, you know, um, staying in front of my man, being quick, um, anticipating things like that uh, to be able to help us on the court. Um, it was a great opportunity. I mean, not just academically, um, but the, the opportunity to do something different, um, something special uh, that not everybody gets to do, which is something I couldn't really pass up. Yeah. Systems management major. Um, I want to go into business eventually. Uh, I thought that'd be the best idea right there to go with that. Armor. What? Tanks. Tanks are awesome. I mean, I go to war, I'd want to be in a tank, so that'd be pretty cool. Hi, I'm Josh Herbeck. I'm a senior for the Army men's basketball team. The Army women's basketball team opens up their home schedule tonight at 7 o'clock. I'll have the call for you on the Patriot League Network. Head coach Dave McGarity gets us geared up as he's at the whiteboard for this week's Army X's and O's. Hi, my name is Dave McGarity. I'm the head women's basketball coach at West Point. And today I just want to talk a little bit about our continuity offense. Uh, with the 30-second shot clock, it's very, very important that, that our group can get into something quickly, uh, if in fact we do run anything at the end of a transition or a fast break situation, whether it's a secondary break, uh, with that 30 second clock in mind, you really need to be efficient in, in, in what you get into and how quickly you get into it. Uh, ran this a lot when I was a men's coach for years. Uh, look at some different uh, things in this set to, to get shots for not only our guards but for our post players. And really all it is is a three out, two in situation with a high ball screen. Uh, you'll see a lot of teams do this. Uh, you know, I sort of took a little bit from the pros. Uh, we, we, we modeled it after some things that the Boston Celtics used to do years ago. But, but quite honestly, it's, it's pretty much America's play. Uh, and it's just a matter of getting into uh, coming off a high ball screen uh, and, and pretty much spreading the floor and letting our guards create off the dribble and be able to read the defense. So basically what you're looking to do is uh, if you run a set quickly, you need to get into a three out situation. Say your point guard would be one, would have the ball. Uh, we want to get our other two perimeter players that would be two and three in this diagram uh, flatten out and pick a side of the floor. And what we're going to do is we're going to rise one of the post players into a high ball screen. So for instance, if if, if the point guard is shading the left side, we're going to bring five up into a high ball screen. Uh, we're going to set this screen somewhere probably straddling the three-point line. Um, I, I like to really have that as, as a rule of thumb because if a defender chooses to go underneath the ball screen, uh, as that screen's being set here, um, that we give the guard an option to step back and shoot a three, especially if you have a three-point shooter, someone that has that kind of range. Uh, if, if, if you set the ball screen higher, that's going to eliminate that as an option. So first of all, positioning is very, very important. As we come off the high ball screen here, it's very important that we keep the ball side guard low. We don't want her what we call leaking up. We don't want her leaking up and bringing her defender with us because the first option coming off the screen, if we don't choose to step back and shoot the three, would be to turn the corner in a clear out situation and get to the rim. 
All right, when, when that guard turns the corner, she has to be under control, understand that there's going to be weak side help. So if four's defender is here in the lane, three's defender is two passes away now, so technically she should be in a help position over here. Uh, what we're looking to do is get into the lane, and draw a defender. If that's four's defender here, then we have a dump off play there. If a team defensively does a good job in all those rotations and she overcommits, if three's defender overcommits, we have a kick out to that side. Traditionally, the way we would defend this, we would never leave the shooter or the ball side. So as she's coming off of this screen, in the event that her defender goes to help, that's a kick out option there and that's why it's critical for this guard not to leak up and bring her defender up to a help situation. Well, you know, basically this offense um, is, is an offense that we've gone to over the years. We haven't run it quite as much um, when we had a smaller group of guards a few years ago and when I had uh, probably one of the best low post players I've coached here, Aaron Anthony. Uh, we would run a lot of variations of this set to get the ball inside. We would do a lot to free her, whether it was uh, block to block screens or diagonal screens, just to get her the ball because she was such a, a threat in a low post. We had uh, different guards that were, were pretty good off the dribble. Uh, the past couple years, we've been a little bit more uh, structured personnel wise to run a lot of pro sets. But as, as, as this team evolves with Kelsey Minato at the point, she's very, very good at using screens and creating off, off the high ball screen. So we're, we're starting to look at doing some things out of that a little bit more. And it's something that, you know, it's, it, it takes a lot of time. Kids need to, to really work on this to, to, to get a feel for it and understand what the looks are. Last Friday was the second Army-Navy Cup as the Army and Navy men's soccer team squared off at PPL Park in Chester, Pennsylvania, home of Major League Soccer's Philadelphia Union. It was a great day, a great evening of soccer, though the outcome not in the favor of the Black Knights. We gave the flip cam to Director of Team Operations Brad Brown as he took us through the day and what it takes to set up such a big event. All showered, all cleaned up. Time to, time to get some coffee. Uh, it's about 4.35 right now. Um, for all you listeners, viewers, my name is Brad Brown, Director of Team Operations for Army Athletics. Ops guy's best friend. Nice hot cup of joe in the morning. And we are here in the office, building 639 Army Athletics in the Office of Director of Intercollegiate Athletics. You can see all the doors are closed except for Office 323, Brad Brown, Director of Team Operations. Let's, uh, let's make it happen. And we're in. Email is up at officially 5.24 a.m. My other screen, front page of GoArmySports.com. Army and Navy meet at PPL Park in regular season finale. That's where we're headed today. Just doing our final checks before we pack up, uh, take off for Army Navy Cup. We have the cup, which we presented back to Army today. It's our hope. We got our game credentials. Make sure everybody can get in the park that's working the event. Got to have the air horn for college soccer. Three radios, two and a backup. All of our CDs to include both Academy alma maters. Our keys to everything. Um, couple pieces of gear, just as a backup. Uh, we're looking to pack up here shortly. Time is 6.24. Just another morning at West Point. B Navy. Just loading up. Got to bring the prize possession that we talked about earlier. Army Navy Cup. 1-1 one, one last year. 7.52, on our way to Philly. On the last leg of the trip, last couple of miles crossing the Commodore Barry Bridge, which you can see uh, from PPL Park. It's kind of the backdrop of the facility. So we are in the final stretch here, getting ready to start uh, stadium operations, do our checks, meet the uh, Army team for walkthroughs. Yes. PPL Park, beautiful Chester, Pennsylvania. 
First things first, got to check the locker rooms. Uh, currently waiting on the Army team to come in for a walkthrough today. Uh, we're going to check the field out, check the locker rooms, check the press box, make sure that we have everything we need and everything set up uh, the way we want it. All right, first things first, we do everything in ops from hanging signs, pregame, all the pregame ceremonies, picking up dirty towels. You'll see it all today. Um, just get ready for the game officials to arrive in six hours, seven hours. You know, making sure, uh, making sure it's always perfect. Gotta be type A. Gotta be a perfectionist. Gonna be here shortly. There they are, Army men's soccer, here for their walkthrough. It's about quarter after 10. We're just going to double check with Coach, make sure he's all right. Um, you can tell the guys are just stretching out, kind of get their legs underneath them. Make sure uh, they're ready to go for 7 o'clock. Getting ready to test out some video board type stuff. Carl Mandel from the Union. Just part of the checks. About two hours since we arrived here at PPL. Everything's square. We're gonna do a little unloading. Go get some lunch in downtown Philly. Currently unloading the van. Tons of multimedia equipment. So the Nick DeSanctis, play-by-play -play guy, coordinator multimedia and broadcasting, and ops. Be setting up, calling the game tonight. We gotta gotta feed the body. Get some fuel, fuel in John's Rose Pork. Who says we need cheesesteak in Philly? Check out that pork for lunch. Mmm, John's Rose Pork. We're at the Army Team Hotel, Philadelphia Renaissance. Approaching. We are picking up Jordan Springer. The AI. Quick sneak peek at the Army locker room prior to their arrival. Got the camo and the black. We are approximately four hours and 40 minutes from kickoff. Field's looking good. The uh, facility staff, field maintenance crew is putting down stars. Um, really making the uh, the field look great. So, uh, getting exciting, getting close. It's 4.30 now. The color guard is in. I'm going to get the national anthem singer. Uh, and uh, Navy's representative is here. Uh, our media folks just arrived. So it's all coming down to, uh, to 4.30. Just waiting on the cannoneer, the two teams, and the game officials. Um, if, if for some reason that gets scanned, great. But we'd like to plan for it. Possible. The idea being our color guard to the front. Here's Naval Academy coming to PPL Park, Army Navy Cup, Army Men's Soccer arriving at PPL Park for Army Navy Cup. Coach Payne and company. It's getting crazy right now. Fans are starting to pour in. Just finalizing things, got the rosters, pre-game here shortly. We're uh, 35 minutes in, I uh, just wanted to catch you up, get you a little game action. Currently working uh, working the table next to the fourth official. See the crowd, scoop the crowd, not bad. Spilling into the end, so it's a pretty good crowd. It's 2 a.m., just got home from a long day in Philly. Gotta, gotta get some rest for 90 minutes. Get a football game day uh, here at West Point. So thanks for tuning in. Go Army. Last of the day, we hand the microphone off to our respective basketball teams for 15 seconds with Army Athletics. Hi, I'm Jean Parker of Army Women's Basketball. Hi, I'm Larry Toomey from Army Men's Basketball. Come support us this Thursday against FDU. And come support us Friday night against NJIT. Both games start at 7 at Crystal Arena. Go, Go Army! Army.
Both basketball teams with their home openers this weekend. The women, as I mentioned tonight, the men tomorrow night. Tickets are still available by calling one eight seven seven T I X Army or by visiting GoArmySports.com. Thanks so much for joining us on this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. Until next time, for Night Vision, I'm Nick DeSanctis.